So, servus Leute. Und ja, ich bin wieder zurück, aber nicht mit einem Gameplay, sondern ähm, ja, ich habe hier eine coole Sache gefunden. Und zwar könnt ihr live mit ansehen, wie ein ähm, wie ein Rover hier auf dem Mars landet. Und zwar wird das Ganze genau in äh, 23 Stunden und 40 Minuten sein. Wir haben jetzt 20 vor 7 morgens, das heißt 5 Uhr morgens. Könnt ihr hier äh, auf Xbox Live auf jeden Fall, ich weiß nicht, wie das auf der Playstation ist oder überhaupt generell am PC. <lacht> könnt ihr live mitverfolgen, wie der Rover auf dem Mars landet. Finde ich eine richtig geile Sache. Und wollte das auf jeden Fall noch mitteilen und äh, ich werde auf jeden Fall noch äh, Videos machen, wo ich genau sage, warum ich in letzter Zeit so wenig Videos gemacht habe und warum. Aber jetzt will ich ja auf jeden Fall diese Geschichte hier zeigen. Ja, ihr müsst hier auf, die, äh, auf den Button klicken und dann ladet ihr hier so einen komischen Event Player runter, den müsst ihr runterladen. Ähm, da haben wir es Countdown to Showtime 22 Stunden und 44 Minuten ja ähm, ich glaube also ich habe die ganze Nacht durchgezockt ich bin ein bisschen verwirrt aber ich warte ich hier nach Adam Riese muss erst 5 Uhr morgens sein und ja könnt ihr live mit verfolgen wie der Rover auf dem Master mit ich finde das super spannend und werde auf jeden Fall um die Uhrzeit mir das reinziehen. Ja, ansonsten, was gibt es noch zu sagen? Ja, wie gesagt, es, ich werde auf jeden Fall demnächst ein, ein zwei Videos reinhauen, warum, warum ich das so wenig gemacht habe in letzter Zeit. Und ja, das war es erstmal. Ich zeige euch hier noch so einen Trailer zu der Geschichte und hoffe, das kleine Video hat euch gefallen. Bis demnächst. Peace out. When people look at it, uh, it looks crazy. That's a very natural thing. Sometimes when we look at it, it looks crazy. It is the result of reasoned engineering thought. But it still looks crazy. From the top of the atmosphere, down to the surface, it takes us seven minutes. It takes 14 minutes or so for the signal from the spacecraft to make it to Earth. That's how far Mars is away from us. So when we first get word that we've touched the top of the atmosphere, the vehicle has been alive or dead on the surface for at least seven minutes. Entry, descent, and landing, also known as EDL, is referred to as the seven minutes of terror because we've got literally seven minutes to get from the top of the atmosphere to the surface of Mars, going from 13,000 miles an hour to zero in perfect sequence, perfect choreography, perfect timing, and the computer has to do it all by itself with no help from the ground. It, if any one thing doesn't work just right, it's game over. We slam into the atmosphere and develop so much aerodynamic drag. Our heat shield, it heats up and it glows like the surface of the sun. 1600 degrees. During entry, the vehicle is not only slowing down, violently through the atmosphere, but also we are guiding it like an airplane to be able to land in a very narrow constrained space. This is one of the biggest challenges that we are facing and one that we had never attempted on Mars. Mars is actually really hard to slow down because it has just enough atmosphere that you have to deal with it. Otherwise, it will destroy your spacecraft. On the other hand, it doesn't have enough atmosphere to finish the job still going about a thousand miles an hour. So at that point we use a parachute. 
The parachute is the largest and strongest supersonic parachute that we've ever built to date. It has to be able to withstand 65,000 pounds of force, even though the parachute itself only weighs about 100 pounds. When it opens up that fast, it's a neck snapping 9Gs. At that point, we have to get that heat shield off. It's like a big lens cap blocking our view of the ground to the radar. The radar has to take just the right altitude and velocity measurements at just the right time, or the rest of the landing sequence won't work. This big, huge parachute that we've got, it'll only slow us down to about 200 miles an hour. And that's not slow enough to land. So we have no choice, but we've got to cut it off and then come down in rockets. Once we turn those rocket motors on, if we don't do something, we're just gonna smack right back into the parachute. So the first thing we do is make this really radical divert maneuver. We fly off to the side. Diverting away from the parachute, killing our horizontal velocity and our vertical velocity, getting the rover moving straight up and down so it can look at the surface with its radar and see where we're going to land. And we head straight down to the bottom of a crater, right beside a six kilometer high mountain. We can't get those rocket engines too close to the ground, because if we were to descend propulsively with our engines all the way to the ground, we would essentially create this massive dust cloud. That dust cloud could then go and land on the rover. It could damage mechanisms and it could damage instruments. So the way we solve that problem is by using the sky crane maneuver. 20 meters above the surface, we have to lower the rover below us on a tether that's 21 feet long and then gently deposit it on its wheels on the surface. As the rover touches down and is now on the ground, the descent stage is in a collision course with the rover. We must cut the bridle immediately and fly the descent stage to a safe distance from the rover. <laughs> 